<laughs> well, look, when he got right down to it, what did you think of or, the match? Or the, uh, <laughs> the vacuum cleaner that the winner of the All Japan and NOAA <laughs> combined show got <laughs> on TV Gaora or whatever it was. Oh, God. We'll, we'll, we'll put up the picture on uh, social media but on that one and, and the looks of that one <laughs> later. But when, when it came to the, the, the final match, look, a lot of people, you know, if this was any other thing, if this was a house of torture type situation, we would be complaining about all the interference that took place in the Cody Rhodes-Roman Reigns match. But the fact was, with... Cody and Seth losing on night one. You knew there was going to be bloodline rules. You knew there were going to be a bunch of people interfering or at least trying to interfere. And that is exactly what we got. But then we got a little more than what we could have expected with John Cena coming down to take out Solo Sokoa, get a little revenge on him. We saw The Undertaker appear. Probably could have been Stone Cold Steve Austin in that position as well. He takes out The Rock. Yeah. Long time, long time vaunted rival of The Rock, The Undertaker. Well, you, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Rikishi would have been better. Well, so then at the very, well, you could have did that, you know, but he, he would be doing it for The Rock. But then at the very end, Seth Rollins, who we don't actually see, I don't think, I don't remember actually seeing him. You hear the music of The Shield. And then the only time when I saw him, he was already laid out by Roman Reigns, but he went to attack Reigns with a chair in his shield gear, as he did many years ago. And Reigns takes the chair, he looks at Cody, and then he's overwhelmed by getting revenge on Seth, remembering what happened, and he goes to work on Seth, which led to Cody Rhodes getting the victory. So in all of that interference that took place and all of that counter-interference that took place from everybody getting out there for Cody, there was no baby face that helped Cody Rhodes win that match. He took advantage of Roman Reigns, who slipped. Yeah, this is no hyperbole, but... As Triple H would say, you had to expect that sort of match going in. And you mentioned the House of Torture earlier, Mike. People, mm -hmm. some people hate the House of Torture style matches. Some people love them. But it seems to be a consensus of people that love when evil loses in a big match. Because what happens is the leader of the House of Torture gets his at the end. And what we had here was a tastefully done execution of that very formula. And I thought it came off great. I thought it was the perfect call as to what should have happened in this match. You've had the bloodline running roughshod over the WWE for years and years and years wronging main eventers, stopping them from getting their rightful top chance to be the face of the company. And now those same wrestlers and Mark came back and put an end to this story. And a fine job they did and put a good end to night two, which was, in my opinion... Leaps and bounds better than night one. I don't think I'm going out too far on a limb by saying that. And in fact, The Rock and Roman Reigns against Cody and Seth coming after that Sami Zayn Gunther match was a real disappointment. And there was like 40 minutes that separated the end of the Zayn Gunther match to us getting to the bloodline and Cody Rhodes and Seth, which. You know, if you're a fight fan, you're used to that kind of delay. But then we got a 45-minute match that I thought Tom just dragged on way it, too long. Hold on, hold on. No, that's not actually what happens most of the time because In the boxing, UFC... Boxing, boxing, boxing. The, yeah, the UFC has it set up to where it's a fight every half hour. So, sure, sometimes there are instances in which you'll get a, a lull because a fight ends very quickly. But you also have a post-fight interview. You have the, all these video packages. They have advertisements. Much like we have coming up here. So, Mike, I'm going to kick it to you, and you can kick it away. Here's Commerce. Mike Sempervivi, Filthy Tom Lawler, Wrestling Observer Live. To the show, Mike Sempervivi and Filthy Tom Lawler here with you. WrestleMania hangover. 
I know the show has sounded like that so far. Don't worry. Only one more segment to go, and then we're out of here. And then tomorrow, the boss man, Brian Alvarez, will be rejoining all of you. I think that's the case, at least, unless he gets lost in a, a redwood forest, which is possible, Tom. Uh, you know, but I think he's going to be back. Are you guys doing a filthy four daily at any point this week? Hope not. I got a this life. enough for you? That's <laughs> Do you really? Do you? Not not outside of wrestling and MMA, but <laughs> sure. hey, keep this this keeps you busy enough. But a uh, couple other things. Big, I'm a big ec- other... big eclipse guy too. <laughs> That's yeah. I see. But after today, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you can you know what with glasses like that, if you you paint them black and red, you can do what a uh, a midnight rockers ode. You can be Marty Jannetty to somebody, Shawn Michaels. There ain't enough drugs in Las Vegas to get me on that level. No, sh- you know what? No Marty Janetti appearances and he, whatever county he is currently in, he may not be allowed by law to leave that county. But we did get one wacky independent wrestling story out of Philadelphia over the weekend, which was Sabu, who was supposed to be inducted into the Indie Wrestling Hall of Fame, presented by GCW, which also featured Hot Step Eddie Gilbert going in and the Briscoe Brothers going in, amongst others. Apparently, Sabu took the deposit, was in the hotel room, refused to come out of his room to go up for the ceremony. Um, have you well, had he made any it. dealings in the past here with Sabu or, uh, or Super Genie? No, but actually they do live in Vegas from what I understand. He made it down to his table at WrestleCon, at least. (laughs) But I guess he didn't make it up to the ceremony. So for once, he chose not to get high, -er, and he chose to go lower. I don't have a good transition yeah. for that, except for the fact that CM Punk has never gotten high before, at least off of any sort of narcotic. You can make cracks about CM Punk and his ego and getting high off of himself, but uh, he looked uh, pretty healthy out there. Now, he did say in the Ariel Helwani interview that he thought he could push through with WrestleMania if he needed to, but they saved him from himself, but he did rip off that arm brace last night steals Drew McIntyre's thunder. Damian Priest comes down after McIntyre defeats Seth Rollins to win the World Heavyweight Championship. Out comes Damian Priest to cash in. I don't think that this was any big surprise that Priest was going to cash in or attempt to cash in on Drew either last night or or maybe tonight on Raw. And they obviously chose uh, Sunday night for that to happen. But how it ended up happening to me was a little bit of a surprise. But I think also plays perfectly into Drew McIntyre and his character and being a heel that everybody hates but does tell the truth. One more time, his WrestleMania moment was taken away, this time in front of the fans. What did you think about how everything opened up yesterday? Well, it was no surprise, as you mentioned, that Damian Priest came out. It should be no surprise that CM Punk is healing faster and ahead of schedule. As we know from years and years ago, fighters just heal faster than normal humans. I've heard that. It's just the case. We're a different breed. We're born different. A lot of us have that dog in us, and apparently CM Punk is one of them. Drew McIntyre, if I was the booker, and believe me, I'm not, but if I was, Drew McIntyre would be my world champion. To me, he has everything that you want. He's huge he's credible he's mean he's scary he's got an edge to him he's sarcastic enough i love drew mcintyre but i also love what they did here with cm punk getting a measure of revenge drew mcintyre just couldn't help himself much like roman reigns he just couldn't help himself had to get in cm punk's face instigated it until damian priest came out won the belt And now we'll see, does Damian Priest reign atop of Monday Night Raw as a heel? Or is the Judgment Day on its way to breaking up? We've seen dissension over the past few months. Dominic 
making decisions on his own. The rest of the crew questioning Rhea about it. They've been planting seeds for a long time. And now, is that seed going to sprout with a little bit of water from the help of Drew McIntyre? Well, let me ask you this. I'll answer that question with a question after I get uh, done uh, rambling here a little bit. I, I would I would remix the group because in the past we have had Rhea Ripley talking to Drew McIntyre. And we've had all of this interaction take place with, as you mentioned, Dom not letting everybody know what's going on. And is it time to maybe pull away Rhea Ripley, who obviously does not need that group? You know, she's a star all on her own. That was once again uh, showcased this weekend, the response that she got. I still think that next year, Bianca Belair and Rhea Ripley, or Charlotte Flair and Rhea Ripley, if built up correctly, can certainly close one of the two nights and maybe even close Sunday night, which would, again... It's a, everything is about optics, as WWE proved all weekend. These things are about optics, so that could be a big deal. Dominic Mysterio certainly does not need the Judgment Day to get booed, although he and Rhea have been a great act together. There's other things that you could do with Dom. Is it time possibly to bring Drew McIntyre in to have him be the leader of a group that also has Finn Balor and J.D. McDonough as a part of it, who can also help him kind of fend off other people and, and go to on the attack on others? I mean, my guilty pleasure would be that they would keep Rhea Ripley and actually make her a stronger heel, get rid of Damian Priest from the group. Drew McIntyre joins as kind of the de facto male leader or focal point. And then you know what you do? I think now, now that we have two male champions, it's time we have the big showdown. And after watching last night, Sunday night WrestleMania, watching the crowd go crazy during the co-main event. You know who I think should beat Rhea Ripley? Who's that? None other than my girl, Bailey. She had a big night. And the Bailey EO Sky match, I think because of everything that took place over the weekend with Cody and Roman and, and that match, the tag match, Sami Zayn and Gunther, you have a lot of people are going to remember because it was just so sports entertainment-ish. The Philadelphia Eagles, Lane Johnson and uh, and Travis or uh, Jason Kelsey going out there yeah. for the Eagles. You know, a lot of people are going to remember that. But Bailey and Neo Sky had a really great 15 minute <sighs> match, I thought. And I, you know, I didn't think that that Eo Sky was going to win for, you know, but it's the way it was going. It's like, OK, is there a way they could possibly have Bailey lose here? And ultimately, that was not the case. But a really, really great match that I hope doesn't get lost in the mix over the weekend. I was really, really happy at the outcome of the fans when it came to both that match because they have done a great job, I think. I've really enjoyed the feud. There was a pivot probably around the time of Survivor Series where I started noticing that they were turning Bailey into a baby face. For a long time, everybody thought it's going to be Bianca Belair that gets the upset or, or upsets damage control and breaks him up. She gets the big win over EO finally, but there was some sort of change in the booking and I could see Bailey being set up to win the Royal rumble. And I think over the past, I guess it's really been like five, six, seven months. They've done a great job in getting over damage control as a dominant, dominant faction, heel faction, and also getting Bailey back some sympathy some empathy from the fans after being a heel for so long and i was happy that the crowd got behind those two in that match and also as well uh aj styles and la knight just because there's no belt involved just because it's a match a regular match between two guys on wrestlemania i thought i hope this doesn't get lost in the shuffle and those guys went out there and they put forth one heck of an effort and had the crowd into that match the whole time so AJ Styles might be the wrestler of this century when you really think about it
and the right person won with LA Knight getting the victory there. I mean, you know, I, I, I was wondering if they were going to go in that direction or, you know, AJ Styles go ahead and, and give him the victory. But as soon as I saw all that Slim Jim branding everywhere, I figured, okay, you know, there's no way they're going to have LA Knight pull up in the Slim Jim car. And then when all that branding's everywhere, go ahead and take the L. But what did you think of uh, all the branding? You know, it was, I was, it's been so long and I'm so used to this watching Arena Mexico shows, watching MMA shows, boxing shows. You're used to that stuff everywhere. New Japan for years, having all of the advertisements everywhere. But it was a new thing for WWE and I, I you know, I got to be honest, it didn't annoy me. It didn't bother me one second. You know, uh, the prime bottle being in the middle of the ring, it was not obnoxious, wasn't even color. They had the outline of it, so that didn't even stand out. But certainly when they went outside the rings, you had Wheatley Vodka, you had Dude Wipes, you had all this other American home Gin mortgage. and juice. <laughs> Gin and juice, uh, you know, so you had all that stuff going on. What do you think about any of that? Do you care about that? Does, does that take away any of the aesthetic enjoyment for you as a wrestling fan? Not at all. It actually, I mean, WWE to me, like WWE is going to do this stuff anyways. They're going to have some wacky turkey match around Thanksgiving. They're going to have some dude in a weird costume. So you might as well integrate it with some of the sponsors like they do with the Prime Bottle. Now, I am disappointed that it was KSI in there. I mean, that's who I expected. I thought they should have had a, a big surprise for WrestleMania. That's so nice. It's like, I'm like, who the hell is I Show Speed? I'm a 50 year old man. I don't know who I Show Speed is. Wait, is that Speed who that is? was? Yes. Who is he? I thought it was KSI. No. no? Well, I don't know. It was some I don't know. Dude KSI prime, owns the company, so some he's a guy in a prime out. bottle. You say KSI's making out on some of this WWE money as, as well as Logan Paul, you know, getting getting because uh, he owns part of the company. But, yeah. you know, again, it didn't it didn't bother my enjoyment of it at all. And it's just something that, I you know, like instantly here I'm getting used to. One thing before we get out of here, too, and I don't know if you saw any of the pre-show or not, but Lee Fitting has done an amazing job as far as changing some of the look of, of Raw and SmackDown in the TV. We've seen new graphics. Oh, I thought you meant the new things. I thought you meant the dungarees. No, no, not 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 when you're wearing your Adidas and, and, and your Lees like Run DMC did. No, I'm talking about Lee Fitting, the guy who actually put together for ESPN, you know, worked for ESPN and put together, I thought, an incredible pre-show with some of the incredible packages including on the shooting that took place at the kansas city chiefs parade and i just thought they did a great job that way and that's something that i'm i don't know if you had a chance to see it or not but it is fantastic stuff i really enjoy the video packages wwe's been putting forth i enjoy the changes that they've had in production and i mean i thought wrestlemania I thought both nights were were good. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.